Welcome to the Vet and Create Academy, where we discuss veterinary emergency and critical care and science-based tools for veterinary professionals. There are three different locations where Carolina KUA can be imaged with the ultrasound. Sabzafoid U, portic hepatis, and abdominal portion of the Carolina cava or CVC. The subsephoid view is the most common location to image the CVC. A sagittal view of the abdomen obtained by a CT scan is depicted on the screen to facilitate their understanding of the anatomy and location of the Carolina cava. To image the CVC at the subsephoid side, the transducer is placed longitudinally under the subsephoid process and angled cranially to visualize the diaphragm. The ultrasound probe is fanned to the right of the midline until the CVC should be identified at the point where it crosses the diaphragm. Then the ultrasound probe is slow, slowly fanned off either side of the CVC and returned to the position where the CVC is subjectively felt to be at its widest diameter. Alternatively, CVC crossing the diaphragm can be imaged in the portohepatis view. To locate the portohepatis, the transducer is placed parallel to the ribs, transfers to the CVC and aorta at the 10th to 12th right intercostal space, approximately just below the paxial muscles in the upper third of the thorax. If aerated lung was encountered, the transducer is angled or moved caudally one intercostal space where the probe is placed dorsally over the paxial muscles and slid ventrally between the ribs until the portohepatis is visualized. In cases where the right kidney is identified, the transducer is angled or moved one intercostal space cranially. By doing so, a transverse image of the portohepatis is obtained. The image represents a transverse sonographic view of the portohepatis with the three major vessels. Pleural vein, orange CVC, blue color, and aorta yellow. Let's briefly discuss the physiology of CVC collapse during respiration. As the patient breathes in, the pleural pressure drops and the negative pressure is generated in the chest. This negative intrathoracic pressure is being transmitted to the right atrial pressure that also drops, leading to increased blood flow from the abdominal to the thoracic cavity. At the same time, expanded chest is pushing down on the abdomen during inspiration, causing an increase in abdominal pressure further improving the flow of blood from the abdomen to the chest. This combination of increased abdominal pressure and reduced intrathoracic pressure leads to the CVC collapse during inspiration, which normally occurs in healthy humans and animals. In order for the CVC to collapse, intraabdominal pressure should exceed RA pressure during inspiration. Patients on positive pressure ventilation will have a reverse physiology, since positive pressure breath will cause elevation of intrathoracic pressure on inspiration and CVC distension instead of collapse. There are multiple limitations of the CVC collapse, and CVC collapse does not always equal to volume responsiveness. First of all, healthy animals and people will have CVC collapse on inspiration. This doesn't mean that you have to give fluids to healthy individuals. Second, since CVC collapse happens with intrathoracic pressure, drops, shallow breathing, anting may lead to the lack of collapse even if there is hypovolemia or volume depletion. Third, if the patient has increased right atrial pressure due to right side heart failure, this will result in a lack of collapse despite the presence of hypovolemia. Third, let's say you have a patient in respiratory distress due to upper airway obstruction. 
this patient is going to generate very negative intrathoracic pressure. Since the CVC collapse depends on the difference between intrathoracic and abdominal pressure, the majority of these patients will have CVC collapse regardless of their volume status. Finally, abdominal hypertension due to any etiology, for example, due to ascites, may lead to CVC collapse even in hypervolemic patients due to the high pressure elicited on the intra-abdominal portion of the CVC. Patients in hypovolemic shock usually have hyperdynamic heart with luminal obliteration and small ties. They tend to have flat CVC with significant respiratory variation, and they also may have peritoneal or pleural effusion in case of neurologic shock. Patients in cardiogenic shock usually have hypodynamic, poorly contractile heart that is dilated. Their CVC is dilated and is lacking respiratory variation. They tend to have B lines as a result of left sided congestive heart failure as well as pleural and abdominal effusion. Patients in obstructive shock may have pericardial effusion in case of cardiac tamponade, RV strain if the mass of PT was the cause of the shock state, and potentially hyperdynamic heart if venous return to the heart was obstructed, mimicking hypervolemic shock. Their CVC may be distended in case of cardiac tamponade or PTE, and also they may have absent lung plating due to the presence of tension pneumothorax. Finally, patients in distributive shock may have a hyperdynamic heart to low afterload and potential volume depletion. However, sepsis-induced cardiomyopathy may result in hypodynamic heart as well. CVC may be normal or small. They may also have septic pleural or peritoneal effusion. By the way, you can download a free diagnosis of shock checklist and treatment of congestive heart failure cheat sheet by clicking the links below located in the description. If you want to learn more, check out our video on blood gas analysis during CPR.